hear about the trailer? The loose caboose is a cargo trailer camper conversion I've been building out for weekend trips and to help me move from place to place. It's called the loose caboose because I'm going to make it look like a caboose because I think that's pretty funny. I'm making some videos about it because I watched similar ones when I was trying to get ideas for the trailer and they helped me out so I'm going to make some and hopefully add to the community and maybe help somebody else out. At any rate, in the beginning, the, a lot of the work is pretty tedious, so I do a lot of time lapses to make things go faster. And it turns out, if you do time lapses, you can listen to music on your phone at the same time. Videos don't let you do that, so there's just going to be a ton of time lapses. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to make a few of these videos until the uh, camper is pretty much done, and I hope you like them. Ran into a problem when I was trying to get everything ready for welding and the floor of my garage isn't even close to level. Um, the bar over there was starting to like sag off and first thing I tried is I tried shimming it together with some old toilet shims I had and everything was still wobbly, didn't seem like it was going to get a good result and I didn't think I could keep everything square while trying to kind of half-ass piece that together. So. What I ended up doing is bringing everything up off the uh, uneven floor on these boards, clamping it together, and then using these square magnets to uh, be a good guide. And then I remeasured my diagonals, and everything is going to be held in place and ready for the uh, the tack welds. <laughs>
vertical welds sounded like hell, but I think they turned out all right. Next thing I figure I'll do is stop being lazy and uh, go finish scraping off that crap on the uh, truck cap. So I'm still procrastinating on scraping the rest of the stuff off of the truck cap out there. So still to prepare for installing that big rectangular piece of reinforcing I welded together yesterday. I am putting together these big saw horses that are basically the same height as the existing ceiling joists. And what they're going to do is give me something to sit the new piece of reinforcing on while I get everything clamped together and fitted in right. Um, so it doesn't have to be this awkward piece that I'm holding up and trying to clamp and everything. And then I've also got these two by fours that are sitting like this the diagonal in here. And what that is gonna do is when I go ahead and cut these pieces out, the walls, if they are going to, won't uh, come pinch inward and make it hard to fit that piece in. So I'm actually having a hell of a time putting together these self horses. The math I did on the front end, I thought would work out, but now it's not. Go figure. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm just running a screw into the, each of the bottom of these two by threes so that they can uh, rotate. And I'm pinching them together in whatever way is going to give me vertical height on the saw horse of uh, 70 and one half inch. And then I'm going to drop a uh, another two by three on top of there that'll make me a full 72 which is my interior height in the uh trailer um and then that piece that square piece is going to fit on top of that but yeah no i thought this was going to lot go a lot smoother but i'm pretty much winging it as i go i'm not looking for a perfect result just something that'll work you know all right get off Cuts turned out pretty good for eyeballing them, so I'm gonna get these popped off, trace them, throw a second set of this stuff together, and get everything in the trailer. Finished scraping the rest of this off. So the last thing I gotta do before I can mount this truck cap up on top is there's this lip here that would be on the back of the tailgate. Um, it'd be fine for a truck, but for my application, I need everything to sit flush. So I think I'm going to use one of these lines in here and just take the angle grinder down it and rip it clean off so that I can get a good seal on all four sides of the truck cap. As soon as I got ready to put this truck cap on, it's been raining for like the past five days. Um, the forecast called for it to be an 80% chance today, but it cleared up at the last second. Um, so I'm out here bright and early trying to get the most of it, um, see if we can get the whole project done today. The cap completely on and it completely siliconed all the way around, watertight and done. Um, it's 45 right now, silicone works down to 40 degrees, it'll be moving up to 50, so we're just barely making it uh, within the temperature threshold. Um, 
roughly what I'm looking at doing today is cleaning off the top of the roof, uh, just scrubbing it so we're gonna get good adhesion with that silicone. Um, I'm gonna set up the saw horses slightly lower so I can fit that big rectangle in underneath the existing joists. I'm gonna make traces with my soapstone on the, uh, on the joists and then from the inside of the box, I'm gonna drill upwards, create four holes at the inside corners and then from there, go top side and do a chalk line in between those holes. And I've got some, uh, what are they called, tin snips. And if those don't work, we're just gonna take the angle grinder to it. My roommate Alex is helping me out today because um, I couldn't do all this by myself. So he might be doing the cutting while I practice uh, welding upside down one last time in the garage. <clears throat> from there, once both holes are cut, uh, cutting out all the joists and also getting the top sheet metal cut out. Uh, we're going to have everything braced up, come uh, reset the saw horses and drop that into place, clamp it together with some bar clamps and then weld it up. From there, i um, going to zip tape the uh, rectangle itself so that the steel and the aluminum aren't in contact with each other. I think you get um, what's called galvanic corrosion if, that, um, if they were in contact uh, for a long period of time. So zip tape the rectangle together and then um, I wanna pre-drill the rectangle before it gets in there. I'm gonna do, after the zip tape, do the silicone all around and then bolt everything together and then do one last bead of silicone on the outside. Got my helper out here today too. This is Lacey. She just had uh, dry skin on her back and she itched it a bunch, so she got that scab. There's nothing else going on with her. <laughs> she's all right. But she, uh, she lives out in our shed. She's our shed cat.
just check the weather and there's a pop-up storm heading this way um it'll be here within the hour so i'm gonna head out go get a tarp but at this point i don't want to be caught uh welding and it had uh to start raining so i'm gonna stop at this point i just ground all the uh paint um except for the top bit i really gotta push up on the roof here and to get uh, the angle grinder room to grind the top of the uh, joists off. Uh, so I've got all three sides except for the last uh, top side with the paint off. Um, so tomorrow there's early morning time frame, no rain. I'm gonna come out, grind the tops off of old six joists and weld everything together, finish up with the zip tape silicone and bolting everything together so it sucks that the storm's running through but it is what it is i was happy to get this uh gap in the weather anyway so yesterday it barely even sprinkled um if anything but the wind did pick up and i'm mig welding so the gas coming out of the nozzle would have been affected by that and i, I just would have had poor welds um so i had to hold off till this morning Wind is still kind of up there, but it's gusting. I'm getting periods where the wind's dying down, so I'm just gonna weld it in between those gusts and probably get everything done today. Well, I set myself up for greatness because where uh, the lines are that I drew and then started to grind through, they're great. But on the other side, there's a big old gap because uh, I didn't, Grind them down square, didn't cut them square. I ended up upping both the wire speed and the voltage, and that helped me get some pretty decent beads. Not one of these welds is actually good looking, but um, I think they're gonna do a lot better than what I was starting with. So, yeah, some of them get pretty ugly. I'm gonna have to patch up that burn through. <laughs> I went for just more is better. So, got some pretty globby welds on there. I'm gonna run through here on the ladder, um, just like this one set up with a wedge of wood in there and get the top bit done. And then we'll be ready to throw the top, the, uh, what do you call it? truck cap on. You actually made it to the end. Nice. Well, I apologize because at the end there it got a little hectic and I missed some videos and I missed some explanations, so I'll tell you now. Um, what had happened was I finished up drilling my last uh, pilot holes and I was ready for silicone that night until I realized that I had an expired tube. 
So the next morning I went out, bought some more, and I had a two or three hour window before the next rain was coming to finish up the project. So I'm trying to do the silicone and it's misting out and I'm trying to dry off the mist with my roommate's hair dryer while putting all the silicone on and I've run out of silicone. So I got about a third of the amount I wanted to put on before the rain started coming down. So I just put down all my bolts, uh, got it sealed up the best I could, ran some self-tapping screws in from top to bottom to get where the uh, the warped roof and the aluminum were having tiny little gaps and it worked pretty good there were some leaks but a few days later I was able to come back and finish up the job with some more silicone I'm all dried in now and happy about it but at the time I uh, was pretty much only able to sit back and watch and wait and see where the real big leaks were About everything I wanted to say. What do you think? Pretty good?